As a kid, I was consistently drawn to paintings and illustrations. And I remember I, I used to do these illustrations with uh, all these characters, uh, and I would come up with storylines for them, for all the characters. And uh, I really enjoyed this process of creating uh, my own movie-like narrative and assigning it to the characters. And in my mind, all these figures had a life of their own, and they were communicating with each other. There was a whole story behind every illustration. And as a kid, I found this really exciting, and it was a fun activity to come up with a story for the illustration. And it was actually more fun than putting the illustration itself together. So I got my first internship when I was 14 years old uh, at a popular magazine of the time that my dad was the editor-in-chief of. Uh, and I was hired as a junior illustrator. I had to read an article or a piece of poetry or a social commentary and come up with the illustration that went with it. Uh, and that was my job. But the most exciting thing about that job was actually hanging out with the graphic designers in the art department. And uh, I very much wanted to be a part of that scene and it was very cool for me because all these guys, they were about 10 years older than me at least. And uh, I wanted to be one of them. I wanted to listen to their conversations and somehow be part of this community. That internship was an exceptional educational opportunity for me. And I remember the first time I saw my illustrations published in that magazine uh, at a newsstand, it was a, an incredible moment for me. I was really happy. As a teenager, I grew up in the 80s. Uh, shortly after the war had ended, my father was a journalist and a historian, so I grew up in that so-called post-revolution intellectual circle, talking about uh, literature, art, culture, were norm at dinner table. And because of that, I was exposed to a series of nuances, cultural nuances, that influenced my work later as an adult. So this was life inside home. Life outside home was very different. Same as any other teenager growing up during the 80s, I was heavily influenced by television, music, pop culture icons, uh, with the difference that our access was limited in Iran. At this time, Western products were banned from coming into the country. So anybody, any chance they had when they would go abroad, they would bring a, a piece of clothing or a pair of sneakers. And it was a really incredible moment for us to have that item because it was really difficult to get it. Therefore, uh, we really paid attention to it, and we didn't look at it the same as any other products because this was a commodity that was very difficult for us to get our hands on. So we had to rely on our own imagination and basically create our own version of pop culture. For example, we would see this denim jacket on MTV, and we wanted it so bad, and you couldn't find it anywhere in Iran. So you had the option of either waiting for somebody to bring it from the outside or actually making your own. And that's what we did. So slowly this desire combined with limitation became a very powerful driving force for us. And we slowly developed our own individual style that told our story. I moved to California when I was 18 years old, and uh, as soon as I arrived in California, I realized that computers have revolutionized graphic design. Uh, and I have a lot of catching up to do because I came from the manual background of graphic design. So I spent about a year educating myself on graphic design softwares and computer techniques, and I eventually put a portfolio together uh, and landed a job as a junior designer at an ad agency in California. It was pretty tough, especially for me who came from Iran about a year or two prior to that. So in order to keep my sanity from a routine of a, a busy ad designer, I began painting. Once I started getting involved in, in the process of painting, I realized that all these uh, references and images in my memory from my childhood are finding their way into my work. 
uh, all these calligraphies and Persian motifs. I don't know if it was nostalgia or if the fact that I was afraid of forgetting them, but I felt like I have to preserve them. The only way I knew uh, how to preserve them was to basically bring them into my painting and give it a new look and give it a contemporary look. I try to remember everything that I heard, everything that I knew in Iran, and a lot of times I have to refer back to those old manuscripts and uh, ancient books, and I had to scan pieces of them and look at them in a computer and study them. I just didn't want to grab anything that is foreign to me. I wanted to make sure that these references from a Persian culture are the ones that I felt close to. Therefore, I reprocessed those and composed a new art with that. Looking at it from the outside, everything was okay. I had a secure job at an ad agency, at a prestigious ad agency. I had a car, apartment, friends. But internally, I didn't necessarily like this parallel life of a, a guy who works at an ad agency and then a painter at night. I, I didn't like the fact that I have to keep my art to myself and make ads for others just to make a living. So at that time, I, I decided to make a major transition. I decided to leave California and move to New York. I went into the office and I quit my job. I uh, packed my apartment, said goodbye to my friends and family, and uh, I drove from San Francisco to New York for about nine days. I didn't have a concrete plan of moving to New York. I didn't have a job lined up and I, I didn't even have a proper research done. It was as if I wanted to uh, throw myself at an unknown and challenging situation and see what comes out of it. And that was just some abstract hearings in my mind, and it wasn't even a tangible thing. I'm not going to say I wasn't scared. I, I was very scared. And during the whole time that I was driving from San Francisco to New York, one part I was very excited because I changed everything. I changed the entire scenario of this movie for myself. From another side, I was scared because, you know, you hear like this monstrous city is waiting for you and all of a sudden you have nothing but you feel like you can have everything. It was very special uh, experiencing New York for the first time. Once I settled in New York, I decided to go back to college and studied graphic design. So I went to FIT, Fashion Institute of Technology. So we had a class at FIT. It was a uh, textile design class, which was basically introduction to screen printing. All of us graphic designers, we hated that class because it was a very messy class. We had to deal with permanent inks and heavy machinery and uh, you know, very old school way of printing. And there was no computer element in the class, therefore we all tried to skip that class. I remember we had an assignment of screen printing a cultural reference from your background onto a garment. Obviously, I immediately uh, went back to my paintings, the uh, abstract calligraphies and Persian motifs, and I printed them on a bunch of t-shirts. Uh, and I remember on a presentation day, I hung these t-shirts and uh, waited for the instructor to come and grade them, uh, which actually I didn't even get a good grade in that class because I was so focused on where to print all these calligraphies that I forgot to cure the t-shirts and cook the ink and so all the ink came off afterwards. But students in that class, they found these t-shirts interesting. Even though the subject matter was from a culture completely foreign for, for the students, but they found it interesting and uh, most importantly, they wanted to buy it from me. So the same class became my favorite class. And once I got really involved in mixing colors together and experimenting with pigments and screen printing technologies, things started to resonate for me. But life outside school was very different because the uh, majority of the Iranian artists, they were against it and they didn't think this was a good idea. They felt like they're too close to these uh, ancient uh, cultural references. They're, too sacred, they should be kept in their own original format. 
you know, I paid attention to all these senior artists that uh, they were important for me. I had a lot of respect for them, but and I hear that, you know, none of them are endorsing this. Uh, and at the same time, I made this mission for myself that I really want to introduce uh, the art of this culture and I don't want to hide my identity and if I remove the identity from this process then there's nothing to it. I decided to make my own brand at that time and basically apply the same principles that I learned into my own brand. So I used uh, NY for New York and I connected to my first name uh, and Nimani became the brand. And the DNA of the brand was bringing classical elements into the current state and time and giving it a new identity. I eventually received my BA from FIT and I rent out a studio in Brooklyn and with the help of my classmates, we manufactured everything there. We would buy raw fabric, we would do the cut and sew in Brooklyn and make the t-shirts from scratch and print the, the collection that I designed on them. So I teamed up uh, with a skilled fashion photographer and a production crew, and I got really hands-on and involved in creating a campaign from photography direction to talent casting, hair and makeup, lighting, uh, post-production. At this time, 20 years have passed since my teenage years but I found myself again doing the same thing, telling a story. Looking back at those days growing up in Iran, some may say that uh, you were lucky to get out of Iran when you were 18 years old, but I would have to disagree with that because I'm very grateful of those years. Those years taught me how to behave in a challenging situations. All those limitations and restrictions empowered uh, a lot of things inside me that I don't think it would have been activated if it was otherwise. And Nimani is a work in progress. I feel like those parallel lines have kind of merged by now. And I, I don't have to have separate practices and keeping them from each other. And I feel like as a modern artist, it doesn't matter if you're a photographer, fashion designer, or a painter, uh, you can't create art for the sake of art. You have to be able to do something with your art. And that's why environments like New York are important because it forces you to think that way. And once you do, the possibilities are endless. <laughs>